Hi guys, today we're looking at variable size arrays in C++. You can um, consider this as vectors. And uh, this is the hacker rank challenge. You can see again here, they are linking to the vector page on C++, which actually I've already opened. And uh, now I think that in the, in the instructions for um, this challenge are a bit long and they are kind of more complicated than they're supposed to be. So I've sort of illustrated what they mean in this notepad file right here. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to have a vector of n elements and we're going to call that A. But A is not going to be a vector storing um, integers, for instance, or doubles, whatever. Instead, it's going to be a vector storing other vectors. So inside our program, we will create other vectors. So for instance, this is K, another vector. And then we're going to store K inside of A. So um, let's say A at index zero is going to be another vector, but this time around is going to be a vector of ints, or um, a, a at index one is going to be another vector and so on. So here, actually I should probably specify that this is going to be a vector of ints. Now inside of our program, we're going to be able to use variables like I and J to access specific elements inside of our vectors A and K. So for instance, we can say A, I like this, which means the um, elements inside of A at index I, this is going to be a vector. All right, we can also have this, for instance, where we say uh, the elements at index J inside of K, and this time around is going to be an int. So um, we can then access our uh, single integers like this. We can say A, I, J, which means uh, we are first looking at the um, elements at position i in, inside of a, which is a vector. And then we can say inside of that vector, which is actually a k vector here, we can say the number as index j. So we could write, for instance, this. And this means it's going to look at the uh, vector at index 0 inside of a, and then the number at index 1 inside of that vector. So uh, that's pretty much how we have to develop our program. Let's look at the inputs that we are expected to deal with. First here, we're going to have two numbers. The first one is going to be n, which means a is going to be um, um, a vector of size two. And the other number two here is for the number of queries, which are this one. Now you can see that on these lines, these queries begin with, actually they are all numbers, but we only have to look at these ones for the contents of the vectors. So you see here three. Three here is the first number because uh, we have to create a vector of size three. And that vector is going to have these numbers as its elements. So uh, a vector of size three that's going to have one, five, and four as integers. And then a vector of size five, which is going to have one, two, eight, nine, three as its elements. And then we are going to be able to have these numbers. So this represents i and j, which I just showed you in notepads. And uh, we can say the um, integer at index zero inside of a, and then index one inside of that vector. And uh, we are supposed to return five, because if you look here, um, this whole thing here would be the vector at index zero. And inside of that vector, the element at index one is this one, zero, one. So we're talking about five. That's why we have to output five. And then here we can write one, three, meaning that we are talking about that vector. And we can say the elements at uh, index three inside of that k vector would be zero, one, two, three. In this case, it's nine. So we have to return nine here. Okay, so let's get started. In order not to waste your time, like I've been doing in my past few videos, I've already written the codes here. It's uh, inside Notepad++. So I'm just going to be pasting my code and then explaining to you line by line what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Now, again, if you've watched my previous tutorials, you can see that I tend to skip the constraints. You guys can go ahead and solve that on your own. And then uh, let me know in the comment section if, if you have any issues. Um, but this is basically to show you ways in which you can solve these hacker rank challenges. You can think of more efficient ways and faster ways and so on. But this is just, you know, to, uh, to give you an idea of how you can solve it. Anyway, so here we are going to start with two integers that I'm going to call n and q. And n and q here are going to represent these two numbers. All right, so this is going to be n, the first number, and then the second one is going to be the number of queries, which is this one. So then we're going to use cin to store the values, and then we're going to use cin.ignore to 
uh, remove the last character, which is the enter or next line character from the input buffer. And then from there, we are going to create a vector. So you can see here uh, in previous tutorials, I think I had something like this because it was a vector of integers. But in this case, I have something like this because that vector, which is A, I'm calling this A, is supposed to store K vectors. And these K vectors are vectors of integers. Anyway, uh, when we create it, then we uh, specify the size that the vector is supposed to have. So in this case, I give it the size N because if you check here once again, we said it's an N element vector. Now, the next thing that we can do is create a for loop. I'm going to go right here. And now let me explain to you line by line. So the first thing is we want to loop through the A vector from um, uh, zero all the way to its end. Now we're going to create a string variable that we're going to call line. And then we're going to use get line to store a full line like this. So in this case, we'll be dealing with 3154 or 512893. Now that we've got that full line and not just a single a token from it, but the full line, we can use I string stream. And uh, let me just make sure that I go here to the top and I include the SS stream like this. So I'm not going to pass that string to our SS input string stream object. And then now I'm going to create two more variables, which are going to be K size and K item. This is to deal with our k vector of ints here. Now I'm going to extract the first token from our string. So for instance, at the first iteration, we are dealing with this here, 3154. I'm going to extract the first token here, which is 3, a number. And I'm going to store that inside the ints that I'm calling k size. And this is perfectly valid because k size is an int. So when we extract it, we can store the value inside of k size. And now that we have the size for k, I can create a vector of integers, which I'm going to call k, and pass it that k size. And now it's perfectly valid for me to say, let all the numbers at the beginning equal zero. So this is the size of the vector that I'm restricting at the beginning, and then I'm setting all the integers to zero. Now we need to populate the array that I'm calling k. And so we go from um, zero all the way to its end. And now we will be left at the first iteration with one, five, four, because three has already been taken away and stored in K size, the K size variable. So now we are left with one, five, four, and we can loop through these and extract each token inside of our variable called K item. And every time we extract it, then we store it inside of K at index J. So at index zero, then index um, one, index two, and so on. Now, don't use pushback. In previous tutorials, you might have seen me do something like uh, this, that's uh, pushback. Don't do that because here we've already um, defined, or we've already set the size of our vector. If you use pushback, you're going to add elements to that vector. So it's going to increase in size. We want to populate that vector and not add stuff to it at its ends, all right? So um, now that we are done populating K, we want to add K to the A vector at index I. So that's what I explained here. When you say um, A at index I, it's a K vector. This works because here we are already adding K to the vector I. And again, if I scroll all the way up, you can see that A is a vector that stores vectors of integers. So this is valid. All right, let's move on to the next part of the program now. We need to um, deal with the rest of the queries. I'm also copying and pasting my comments here. Make sure you get the indentation correct, all right? Don't uh, nest that for loop inside of the for loop above, otherwise you're going to mess up everything. So um, here again, we are looping through um, with all our queries because we have um, two more queries. We're dealing with these, right? Zero, one, and one, three. We are done dealing with this part here to create the K vectors. Now we are dealing with this part, 0, 1, and 1, 3. So we have two queries here, and the number, the way in which we, we know that we have two queries is because we've already input two here at the top, which was this part in the first line. So we are looking through our queries, and then we are getting a string variable that I'm calling query. We get the full line. In this case, at the first iteration, it's going to be 0, 1. 
uh, we use uh, get line to get the full line and then we pass that string to another input string stream object that I'm calling SS. Now I'm creating two variables called X and Y. Uh, I don't want to call them I and J because anyway, I is already um, assigned in this scope. So I'm calling them X and Y. And now I'm using the uh, this SS to extract zero, store it in X, and then I extract one and I store it in Y. And at the next iteration, I'll be storing one in X and then three in Y. Now, when I'm done with that, I can see out the values uh, of the, the integers available at index zero, one and index one, three. So in fact, I could write this, okay? But you know, why not? I, you can also do it like I've done it right here and it should be perfectly fine. So uh, let's run this code now. If I did not mess up the indentation or forget any line, I think it should work fine and it worked fine. Now, just to prove my points, if I change the notation here, the syntax, and I write it like uh, I would with a normal array like this, right? This is how you normally you access elements inside of 2D arrays. So let's run this code. And it still works. Now let's submit this code and make sure that we pass all the various test cases. And we have. So that's it. It was pretty easy, as you can see, but it's a great way to practice with vectors in C++. If uh, you guys like this challenge and you love this uh, video, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, drop comments, uh, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.